Hi, I'm Brandon Ringstad. Welcome to Nature Meets Paper, a learning adventure, a place where we dive into the facts and knowledge about marine biology. Today we will be learning some fun facts about beluga whales. And <laughs> uh, last week I got so excited to put out my first video that uh, I completely forgot to tell you guys about the belugas. So well, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do a better job today. So put on your parkas, because we're going into the Arctic today. So belugas are cetaceans grouped into whales, porpoises, and dolphins. They're odontocetes, which means they're tooth toothed whales. They're in the family Monodontidae, closely related to the narwhal in the genus Delphinapterus, which is Greek for dolphin without a fin, and they're in the species Lucas. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask, answer a few of your questions I asked earlier this week, um, if you had any questions about belugas. And so here, here, were, here were the uh, responses. Caitlin S. asks, how did they get their name? And there are a few common names for belugas, uh, which is beluga, melonhead, and sea canary. So the English word for beluga derived from the Russian word uh, beluka, which means white. Now note that the Russian word of beluga, if you're using the Russian word of beluga, refers to a sturgeon and not uh, the beluga whale that we think of. They are known as the melonhead Due to their large melon on their top of their head, they use this for sound echolocation. It, they can actually move it around to direct sound into the direction that they want and use echolocation by changing the shape of their melon. And, and lastly, sea canaries. Due to the 19th century sailors in the Arctic and Arctic explorers, um, when they heard the clicks, whistles, and high-pitched chirps of the whales and thought that they were canaries. Fun fact. So in the, in the language of Inupiaq, they are known as Siswak, white whale. Leslie R. asks, what is their lifespan and are they on the endangered list? So the lifespan of a beluga was thought to be th around 30 to 40 years. But in 2006, researchers uh, discovered that the growth of the teeth is of the dentin in the teeth is actually laid down once a year and so some of these animals can be 70 or 80 years old now for your question on are they on the endangered species list yes and no yes because certain populations in the high arctic uh, the canadian arctic um, are on the endangered and threatened list but no as a whole um, species there, there's an estimated 150,000 belugas in the world, so it's not low enough to be on the endangered species list, but yes, in certain populations. Elizabeth B. asked, well, states, I would ask too many questions, but learning more about relationships of, to other sea creatures would be good, closely related to what do they eat, etc. These are great questions. So belugas are closely related to the narwhal. Like the narwhal, they are in the middle of the food web. They're both predators and prey. So they eat several fish species. So they eat capelin, salmon, herring smelt, uh, flounder, um, and sometimes even they'll eat crabs, shrimp, um, squid, snails, and some worms on from beneath the ice. They they can dive up to a thousand meters, so which is 3,280 feet for you who don't use the metric system. Um, and they feed on the bottom, bottom of the ocean, so the benthic substrate, in the middle of the water column, and underneath the ice. But they are also prey to killer whales, polar bears, and humans. Mark A asks, why are they white? This is a great question, and this goes back to um, Elizabeth's question uh, about relationship to other animals. So the adult beluga is white for camouflage. They live up in the Arctic, they live near ice, and so it's beneficial for them to be white. 
this this decreases their detection from polar bears and from killer whales so they can blend into the uh, ice flow um, the juveniles they start out as a kind of a light gray and after one month they turn into a blue gray seven years for females they turn white and nine years for males they also turn white belugas are the only cetacean to shed their skin um, and the way that they keep themselves so white is that they shed their skin and they rub against round rocks in estuaries and then they'll rub against the the rocks on the bottom and remove the yellowing uh, layer of skin because the yellowing is caused by algae when they rub off the skin it reveals the bright white my friend Lisa asks why are they shaped like a floating refrigerator but they're so cute so I had a little I had to think creatively on this one um, like your refrigerator they have a ton of insulation so belugas have one of the highest um, blubber contents and body fat contents of all of the cetaceans and they're known to have fat folds along their sides along their ventral um, sides giving them kind of a boxy shape um, they also lack a dorsal fin so they have a dorsal ridge kind of giving them a square back so it kind of makes them look like a big floating box they also have the only movable neck of all the cetaceans so they can they can move their head around that kind of gives them shoulders so it kind of looks like a floating refrigerator with a head on it and these people asked basically asked what's my favorite way to eat beluga so I've only eaten beluga um, once and it was at a uh, family get-together uh, we put a little salt on it we cut it up into thin strips and we uh, put put it into a salad so that's the only way that I've known to eat it it was delicious um, but I can I can eat it because I'm part native Alaskan Inupiaq so I have one rule uh, when I help people discover information and that's to share what you learned um, because what fun is an adventure if you can't share it with somebody uh, and it's the same with learning if you learn something new teach it uh, the best way to learn is to teach and so um, if you found anything interesting um, in this episode share it give it a like um, tell somebody about it um, I also want to thank everyone who was involved um, who responded so quickly um, to my questions um, to, and responding to me so to keep this down on time um, I know people's attention spans are limited and I don't want to go to run too long um, in the future if you have it's okay to have the same question just go ahead and give the give a question that you have a like um, and then I can sort through um, you don't not everyone has to have a unique question um, just give it a like and then I'll know um, that that's gonna be a popular question to ask and I just want to I want to thank everyone for contributing um, and next week we're gonna be uh, learning and discovering about Arctic char so I've got this whole theme going through right now because I just worked in the Arctic um, and I'm gonna have some help from the Vancouver Aquarium um, they're supplying me with photos and so they're actually focusing on the Arctic right now and so I thought it was perfect that I just got back from the Arctic um, and I'm part native Alaskan and that I would teach about these things um, to you guys um, so get uh, get your questions ready about Arctic char uh, and I'll see you in the next adventure I've been Brandon and this was a learning adventure